I did not want to be a tree, a flower, or a wave. In a dancer's body, we as audience must see ourselves, not the imitated behavior of everyday actions, not the phenomena of nature, not exotic creatures from another planet, but something of the miracle that is a human being. Martha Graham. Hello and welcome back to the BFS E-News Podcast. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. And this will be our final podcast before spring break. Yeah! But uh, let me tell you, last week was the annual BFS Dance Concert. And as far as I can tell, this special annual tradition was started 37 years ago in 1980. On today's show, you will hear from students involved in this year's concert in a report by our roving reporter, Paul Romano. The enhanced part of today's show will feature Greg Martin photographs from the dance concert. After Paul's report, stay tuned for an interview with Academic Technology Chair Liz Harnage about what's going on in tech at BFS. But first, listen to this sesquicentennial moment from the class of 1953 alumnus Charles M. Rosenthal. Ben Birdsell wrote my college what I was like, and he, and I remember, and this is true now, this is not an exaggeration, on his letter to, to Colgate was, I know the record doesn't look so good, but take a chance on this guy. <laughs> and that was the interesting part of being in a small school, because he could know the person. So I owe a lot to the, to friends. I mean, I had, besides having a wonderful time that you were friends with your mates you did things together they taught me a lot of things about and it wasn't a lecture it was just the atmosphere I'm here with some really cool kids, also excellent dancers, who are in the dance concert this year. And I would just like to ask them a few questions, if they don't mind. Do you mind? No. 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 Okay. Thea, for example, can you tell me about your piece? Um, So I'm in the eighth grade uh, piece, and um, it's pretty close to being show ready. It's about how we are townspeople living in a town and then it gets destroyed by these corporate people and it's based off another company. And you, Mahasan? I'm in the same piece as Thea. We're together. In the, yeah. Can you t tell me more? Did you choreograph it yourself? Um, we choreographed parts of it, but it was mostly from our teacher, Kadeem. And what's it like uh, working with Kadeem? He's really cool. He he's really like specific about what he wants and like our facial expressions and like how he wants us to act. Very cool. The face actually play, plays into it. Um. Yeah, it definitely does because like there's like a lot of emotion in it, and it's sort of like a big change in our lives in the dance. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Looking forward to the big show. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sophia, are you in a different piece? Um, I'm in three, actually. I'm in the one for my dance class. I'm in one that I volunteered for, which is a Bollywood dance. And I'm in the p piece choreographed by the actual dance team. Very cool. What is your favorite of the three? Um, I would have to, I mean, I couldn't choose one. I would have to say the Bollywood one and the dance team one. Are you excited about the big show? Yes, I am, because we worked really hard for this. I'm here with Alexandra Hamilton. Uh, Alexandra, or Alex, you're in the dance concert this year. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about your piece? Uh, well, I am in four pieces. So the first one I'm in is choreographed by me and another eighth grader, Cammie. Um, the second one is a dance class piece. It is basically about the 
demolition of buildings in Brooklyn and, and just communities in general. Um, the third piece is a piece choreographed by two ninth graders, Fadila and Adasa. Um, it's more of like an African piece. Um, it's very fun and energetic. And the last piece is the dance team piece. I did not choreograph that, but it's there are like 20 people in the dance, so it's kind of it's really fun just being able to dance with people who are um, all ages and at different levels of dance. Can you tell me a little bit about the process of choreography? Um, it was I mean most of the dances I did not come up with the choreography, but um, you got to kind of like incorporate some of your ideas. So. Uh, but the pieces that mainly were my ideas, uh, it was kind of difficult just trying to, uh, I guess, express our feelings and ourselves through dance. And it was also like you kind of had to compromise with the other person about just some of the moves that you wanted to do. Very cool. Which piece are you most excited about performing in the show? Uh, I am excited about performing all of them. I don't. I think they all are extremely fun to watch. They're very entertaining, and yeah. I'm here with Emma, or the Emma Meister General, as her friends call her, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her experience uh, rehearsing for the dance concert this year. Emma. It was fun because you got to perform on the stage and feel like a real dancer. How many dances are you doing? Are you in this year? Well, I'm in one, but it's like first semester and second semester, so and I'm in all year dance, so I'm in the whole dance. Did you fall in immediately in love with your dance, or did you have did it have to grow on you a bit? It had to grow on me. I wasn't really a big fan of it because of like the way he positioned us and the way you had to enter and I didn't like that that much but it was fun I like it now and now you're having fun performing it yeah it's really fun are you looking forward to the big day no why not because it's nerve-wracking because everyone's gonna be staring at you I, I think it's gonna be great it might be you might mess up our clapping is not that good but we're working on it <laughs> All right. I'm sure there'll be a lot of clapping for you anyway. That's um, the roving reporter, Paul, out. With me today is Liz Harnage, Academic Technology Department Chair and MS Tech Integrator. And she's going to tell us a lot about what's happening in technology at Brooklyn Friends School. But first, uh, Liz, tell us just a little bit about your background and how you got interested in technology. I started my teaching career as a Latin teacher. And what I started realizing is that the more I brought in technology into my own classroom, the more the kids got excited and interested in the subject matter. And so I slowly started working with some of the other teachers at my school at that time as well. And more and more teachers got excited about using technology in their classes. Um, and so then I went and I did my administrative degree at Columbia, and then I found myself here. And my main goal is really to try to get kids enthusiastic and excited um, about their academic subject matter through technology. And that means working with the kids, and it means working with the teachers. Okay. So that's pretty much the overall goal of the program. Uh, but uh, what are the expectations in in preschool, lower school, middle school, and upper school? Mm -hmm. Basically, it's to try to deepen learning. Um, and what that means is, how can we make learning more experiential? How do we really get uh, deeper into the learning via technology? Tracy Chow, our lower school technology integrator, is working with the teachers and creating these just wonderful integrated units and integrated uh, projects. Uh, they do robotics, they do programming. They're working on this uh, project right now with uh, Little Bits kits. They're also working with uh, little robots that move. They're called B-Bots. They move from um, little square to square. Um, so they're actually learning programming. Yes, absolutely. It's block-based programming mm -hmm. um, at that level. Um, and block-based programming is something that's been shown to uh, get kids into programming at an early age because it's more visual. 
Cool. Mm -hmm. And then moving up into middle school? Right. We take that type of block-based programming and we um, integrate Scratch in the fifth grade. Scratch is another block-based programming language. Mm -hmm. Um, We start getting into the more technical side of coding, but it's all... Uh, computer science based. But the main piece of this is getting kids excited about technology and using coding to do it. Mm -hmm. But that's not the only thing we do with academic technology. Uh, We've written, as a department, we've written a scope and sequence that includes Quaker practices within technology. How, How do we approach mindfulness using technology, using different apps? We also work on underrepresented groups in technology. It's wonderful. Uh huh. (laughs) <laughs> and moving up to the upper school? Mm-hmm. So the upper school is truly exciting. Uh, our new uh, upper school technology integrator, Jean Kim, has been working a lot on trying to bring in technology into what it is that Brooklyn Friends does really, really well. And in the upper school, and actually throughout the school, clearly, um, that's our arts department and our arts program. Um, kids are involved in all these wonderful different arts projects, and what we've done in the upper school is use Jean's arts background as well as her uh, design and um, coding backgrounds and trying to pull them together into building a design technology program in the upper school. So our goals are hopefully to bring in a design technology international baccalaureate element at some point, Um, but as we're building up to that, Jean works in the ninth grade technology class on prototyping, um, on design, and then bringing those designs to life using technology. Cool. Mm-hmm. What's been the biggest surprise to you in in the last couple of years in technology as far as having to work with our students now? You might have heard of it as the maker movement, but basically the idea that kids can work with technology using their hands and getting them doing that when they're younger and then pulling that through into middle and upper school. And the reason why that's exciting is because it's teaching the same technological concepts, but it's making it more physical. And as we all know, working with adolescents um, and older adolescents, that's how they really get a grasp of what they're learning more when they're getting to actually play and work with and do. It's if you can more tangible. It, you're right. Exactly. If you can feel it, if you can see it, and if you can create something, uh, and they are creating quite a few things there with these 3D printers. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so 3D printing is something that just five years ago, the concept was just so hard to kind of grasp, wrap your mind around. And now we have these inexpensive devices that can churn out um, layer by layer plastic representations of physical objects that have been built. Um, so basically you can make an Eiffel Tower, you can make a little kitty cat, you can make a cookie cutter. We have a cookie cutter project in the lower school where the kids design their own cookie cutters. Um, and in the middle school, we have a uh, medieval castle 3D printing project. And what's really exciting about this is is the tangible aspect of it. So they're learning um, a very basic CAD uh, design software called Tinkercad, um, and they learn how to navigate or, uh, or manipulate three-dimensional objects and to build something bigger, and then we export it and we print it. And the kids get to see what they've done and they get to take it home with them, as opposed to just something that they build online and it seems pretty, but it can never get out of the computer. Thank you so much, Liz. Thank you. Thank you you so much, Andy. It's a pleasure. Thank you, students. Paul Romano, Liz Harnage, Charles Rosenthal, Jessica Jones and Elvira Sullivan for the music, and Greg Martin for the photos. I want everybody to have a nice, healthy, and happy spring break, and remember to let your life speak.